What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and we're at it again with another video. Today we're here for an unboxing and tutorial of the HyperX Quadcast microphone. Now this microphone is aimed at gamers but has features for other scenarios such as vocalizing, podcasting, or YouTubing. The Quadcast is a higher end microphone with adjustability which is important for audio performance. Now if you want to see the effects of using a limited low end microphone, click on the card in the corner of this video. All things said, let's go ahead and get into it. So the outside is just going to slide right off and then this just flips right out the way. First we'll have product cards and a quick start guide. Now we'll actually go over the setup later on in the video. Next we have the microphone and the stand and the USB cable. Now in the bottom of the packaging there's also a microphone mount adapter if you're looking to mount this microphone to a rig. So let's talk about the microphone. The microphone housing is made of metal and features a black pearl paint design. If you look closely, you can see white specks. On the top of the mic is a tap to mute sensor, which works in sync with the LED status bar built into the microphone housing. On the rear of the microphone is a polar pattern dial. This dial allows the microphone to be optimized for different case scenarios, including stereo, omnidirectional, cardioid, and bidirectional. Turning the dial clockwise or counterclockwise requires a little effort and secures into each setting firmly. This is important because it prevents accidental changes once you have optimized your setup. Underneath this, we have a headphone jack and a port for the supplied USB cable. Finally, on the base of the microphone is a gain control dial. Turning the dial clockwise or counterclockwise adjusts the microphone sensitivity. The gain control dial rotates smoothly both clockwise and counterclockwise to stop at both ends. Next, we have the mount. The mount features a metal frame with some plastic elements. Overall, it has good weight and feels high quality. The stand features a built-in anti-vibration shock feature. This is performed by the use of an elastic rope suspension, which effectively suspends the mic and allows it to move. The mount is also angle adjustable and secures into place with a knob, a useful feature for getting a desired microphone position. So let's talk about setup, which is going to be easy. As you can see here, the microphone is already installed in the stand, and this helps with getting everything up and running faster. Next, we're gonna take the supplied USB cable and we're gonna plug this into the quadcast. But before we do so, I wanna say this is a nice cable. It's got a braided design. And as you can see, we have a lot of cable here, which is gonna be great for positioning. Now the mic stand is nice because it features a pass through for the USB cable. So the USB cable slides through and then it plugs right into the microphone. Now I'm gonna be connecting the HyperX Quadcast microphone to my Google Pixel 4 XL. That's what I use to do my YouTube videos. Now, as you can see, the supplied USB cable comes with a USB-A connector and the Google Pixel 4 XL has a USB-C connector. So what we have here is a USB OTG adapter cable, and we're going to connect this to this cable here, and that's going to convert it to USB type C. Now we can go ahead and connect this to the Google Pixel 4 XL. Next, we'll enable the microphone. As you can see, we are in the camera app right now. So we're gonna go to video because that's where we're gonna use the microphone. And you can see the app tells you exactly what to do. Swipe down for external mic. You can just tap on the arrow there. And then you have an option for external mic. Right now it's off. So we're just gonna change up to blue by tapping on the icon there. Now a basic test. If you're a fan of anything that has LEDs, you'll like this feature. Simply tap the sensor on the top of the mic to either enable the mic or disable the mic. Now this design is really nice, but it's also extremely helpful. It's an easy way to tell whether the microphone is active or not, and that's going to prevent accidental recording. Now, as you can imagine, I have the microphone recording right now, and we wanna do a quick test. Again, we have this tap to mute button on the top here. So I'm going to tap it, and ideally we should be muted. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so as you can see, that worked really well. It did what it was supposed to do. Now let's talk about the polar patterns. So on the back of the microphone here, you're gonna have this little knob that's going to have all the different polar pattern options, and you got four of those. So as we change the options here, 
hopefully you'll hear a change in sound. So the first option we have here is stereo. That's what's selected right now. And this is most useful for vocals or instruments. Next, we're gonna have omnidirectional. We're just gonna turn the dial there. And that's going to be best if you have multiple people sitting around the mic. Next, we're gonna have cardioid, which is going to be best if you are a single person, maybe doing a podcast or a YouTube video. And then next we have bi-directional. That's going to be best if you're doing a one-on-one -on -one interview with someone. Now, in order to optimize my setup, I'm going to place the quadcast on the cardioid setting because I'm a solo YouTuber and ideally that'll be best for me. So this is what I sound like with the microphone in that setting. Now on the bottom of the unit, we have what's called a gain control knob and that adjusts the microphone sensitivity. So let's go ahead and give that a try. I'm just gonna speak here and we're gonna slowly turn that sensitivity dial just to see what happens and as you can see it's going to keep rotating there and it'll eventually get to stop and then we can turn it right back up so we're turning it right back up now and we're just doing this to see what happens so I tried to optimize the mic for my setup and this is what I sound like right now. Now obviously I'm going to have to experiment with the mic some more, but overall I feel like I sound a lot better. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. So final thoughts. So the HyperX Quadcast features nice materials and an attractive design theme. Personally, I'm a fan of red and black, so this does it for me. I'm a big fan of that red LED status indicator. If you've been following the channel, you might get the idea that I'm really big on LED. So anything that lights up is automatically an attention getter. Now I will say the more and more I look at the HyperX Quadcast, in a way, it does look like a portable heater, but it still looks really cool. Now I could see if you're a gamer and you already have other pieces of LED hardware, adding this to your setup could be a nice addition. The other thing I like about the HyperX Quadcast is how easy it is to enable and disable the microphone. It just works beautifully. Now we do have that anti-shock suspension and I'm not sure how helpful that'll be to someone like me, but it is a nice aesthetic. But for a gamer, it probably is useful now that I think about it. If you have even just a gamepad with vibration features, this could help eliminate that. As for setup, it's very easy and very straightforward. I like the adjustability settings. That's gonna be very nice for optimizing the microphone for your setup. The next thing is that supplied USB cable, which is obviously very nice, it's braided, but it also has really long length and I can feel confident that I'm going to have enough length for range of motion. So my smartphone is all the way over there and I've got the mic here. I could actually go a little bit further if I wanted to. I'm just not going to pull too far because the cable hasn't straightened out completely, but I could actually touch the wall here. So if I have a bigger setup, this microphone will reach no problem. So that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, please leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, as always, drop those down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now, there are three ways you can support the channel. The first way is to click on the Amazon storefront link found in the description below. There you'll find items that I have bought or I would like like to buy and anything that you do buy from the storefront does support the channel. The next way to support the channel is just by sharing this video with someone who might enjoy it or find it useful. And the last way to support the channel is just by clicking that subscribe button. Now liking and subscribing are important. Those are your ways to vote on whether you like the video or the channel. Liking and subscribing are also important for new viewers. If new viewers see lots of likes and subscribers, they're going to think that the videos are helpful and the channel is worth watching. So that is pretty much it. And until next time, Leon, check in out.